My Sterling Single Part 58, making a brake shaft and a pair of short operating arms to support the brake rods. The first component that I need is a piece of stainless steel, a quarter of an inch in diameter, and here it is on the bench. It is slightly longer than it needs to be and will need machining. I'll show that in the next episode when I assemble the parts I'm about to make. I need to make two brake hangers, not to hang the brake blocks, just to support the rods that pull the brake blocks onto the wheels. Some viewers may be wondering why I'm using metric measurements. The reason for this is simple, I could not get the steel rule into the correct position to measure the distance that is going to be required between the holes. This is all a bit academic though in this case because the brakes on this engine are not going to be functional, mainly for the reasons I mentioned in the last episode, and this engine is designed to use a steam brake, and there's no room for that underneath the floor of the cab in this engine, because the whistle is mounted under the cab floor, and also the twin injector check valve adapter is in the way. What I'm doing here is cutting two pieces of steel bar, and with a bit of drilling and a bit of effort, these will become the hangers that fit on the brake shaft. Here they are looking very rectangular and devoid of holes and very rough, just as they came off the bandsaw. But very soon they'll start to look a lot better than this. The first thing to do is to trim them to exactly the right length, and for this I'm using my milling machine fitted with a suitable end mill. This makes short work of the job, and now both of these pieces of steel are the correct length. At this stage I don't really know what the length needs to be. I will profile them to the correct shape and length once I've drilled the holes. The first thing to do is to mark off the position of the two holes on one of the pieces of steel. I only need to mark out one of the pieces of steel because I will be drilling them together. Over now to the drilling machine with a centre drill fitted in the chuck. Although the centre drill is more or less on the line, it's not necessarily in the centre. I didn't use any equipment for this, just my calibrated eye. The two pieces of steel are firmly clamped in the machine vise and resting on a couple of pieces of mahogany to keep them level. I am told that I should use some things called parallels, but I don't have any of those and I seem to have managed without them for about 50 years, so I think I'll continue with the status quo. Both of these holes need to be a quarter of an inch in diameter. I centre drilled them first, then I drilled them through with one imperial size less than a quarter of an inch. I finished the hole size using a quarter inch reamer. So the first part of the process is complete. Both of these holes are carbon copies of each other. The job was very simple and didn't need any setup time or any jigs and fixtures until now. I'm using a small piece of quarter inch diameter steel to perfectly align the first two holes. Then I fit both of the blocks in the machine vise once again. I already centre drilled this first piece of steel, so now by going through with one imperial size less than a quarter of an inch, followed by a quarter inch reamer, I end up with the second hole perfectly aligned with the first one. Just to verify the size, I thread the brake shaft onto one of the pieces. The next part of the job involves drilling some stainless steel to make two pieces of tube. As always, the first part of the job is to face across the front. I did this by taking a rough cut and then a finer cut, because I want a good finish in this area. I'm working on my old Boxford lathe, and I can never get the camera in the right position to film centre drilling. After the centre drilling operation, I fit a 1 8 of an inch dam to twist drill and drill down the middle. This is stainless steel and I should really use a coolant or a lubricant. I'm taking it easy on this job because I don't want to snap off the drill. The secret when drilling or machining stainless steel is to keep a constant pressure applied. But if the drill starts to make a crackling sound, back off, otherwise you will break it. Time now for parting off. I'm parting off this piece of stainless steel at quite a high speed, it's only a small diameter though. The parting off operation worked a lot better when I set the parting tool to centre height. One of these days, if I ever remember to get round to it, I will tighten the bolt that holds this tool in position on the quick change tool post. After parting off the first piece, I pull the piece of bar further out from the chuck, clean up the end of it, and then part this one off as well. The hole in this piece of bar wasn't long enough, so I had to part off all the way through. 
Well, almost anyway. When it got right to the end, I snapped off the piece. Then I turned the piece of bar around in the chuck and fed in the drill from the other end. It soon broke through. I didn't have to go very far with the drill bit. Now I have two stainless steel tubes. Quarter of an inch OD and one eighth of an inch ID. It's very important that these two pieces of stainless steel tube are exactly half an inch long. Here I'm in the outer part of the workshop and it's fun time. I'm shaping the two pieces of steel bar. You may be wondering why I don't wear gloves. Well, I never wear gloves in the workshop. The reason is simple. I like to know where all of my fingers are all of the time. As a keyboard player, this is quite important. You may be thinking, well, what about the heat? Surely this part's getting very hot indeed. Yes, it is. Is it painful? Yes, but not quite as painful as being married to my second wife. I'm really glad that's over. There is a system that I use that makes it possible to do this without gloves. First of all, you need a piece of wood and clench that in your teeth really tightly. And the more pain that you get, the tighter you bite the wood. Please ignore the last comment, that is not the way I do it. I use a water system. If you watch what I'm doing here, I'm applying a lot of pressure, hence the sparks. Although I haven't shown it in the video, frequently I dip this part into a pot of water at the side of the machine. After doing this quite a few times, two things happen. One is quite a bit of water appears on the table, and because I also dip my fingers into the water, the water soaks into the skin of my fingers. In this clip I'm making sure that both of the parts are the same, so I've refitted the plug that I used earlier in the drilling operation, and this keeps the parts together. The top piece of steel is more or less the correct shape, so I'm using this, and while I'm doing the job at the moment, I'm only really watching the top part. All I need to do now is just round the edges slightly at the other end of the pieces of steel, just to remove any sharp edges. Back into the main workshop and this is what the kit of parts now looks like. I'm not going to paint the stainless steel shaft because in the position it's going on the locomotive it would get badly chipped when I disconnect and connect the water piping. Although I will be painting both of the hangers that fit onto the stainless steel bar. I'll show that in the next episode. Until then, stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.